Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video lecture, we will be discussing paper 1 of O level biology 5090. And this is the specimen paper for the examinations from 2023. So you all know that from uh, 2023, the Cambridge will be testing uh, the new syllabus and only specimen paper for the new syllabus is available. So let's solve it. MCQ number one, which structures are found in animal cells and in plant cells? So guys, mitochondria are found in both animal and plant cells. You know that cell wall is only found in plant cells. Ribosomes are found in both animal and plant cells. Sub vacuole is only found in plant cells, right? So the answer is one and three a. Let's move on to MCQ number two. A student draws a red blood cell. The drawing is 20 millimeter in diameter. This red blood cell is actually 0 0.008 millimeter in diameter. What is the magnification of the cell shown in the drawing? So guys, uh, you all know that the formula of magnification is equals to image length divided by actual length, right? So the image length is actually the length of the drawing or the diameter of the drawing. So that is 20 millimeters. And what is the actual length? Actually, the red blood cell is 0 0.008 millimeters, right? So if we divide 20 by 0 0.008, we get 2500. So the red blood cell, the drawing of the red blood cell shown is 2500 times magnified. The answer is C. Let's move on to MCQ number three. The diagram shows some of the features used to classify animals in the phylum arthropods. So guys, you should know that in the phylum arthropods, um, how many classes are there? So how many classes are there? There are insects and then there are crustaceans and there are arachnids and myropods. right so in the diagram which letter a b c or d could represent insects so guys you all should know that insects have three main regions of the body so you should know that insects have a head they have a thorax that is the chest and they have the abdomen right so insects have three main regions of the body and insects have one pair of antennae and insects have three pairs of legs. So the answer will be A. These three features are common to the insects. Guys, if we talk about B, so four pairs of legs and two main regions of the body. So guys, if we talk about the two main regions of the body and four pairs of legs, this is a feature of B is the feature of arachnids. So guys, arachnids, basically you have four pairs of legs and the two main regions of the body in arachnids are uh, the cephalothorax and the abdomen right if we talk about c c um, shows five or more pairs of legs and two pairs of antennae so guys if uh, you see two pairs of antennae and uh, an organism and five or more pairs of legs or five pairs of legs that is crustacean right crustaceans and d if we talk about d so what are the features of d one pair of antennae two main regions of the body and many pairs of the legs so guys many pairs of the legs is indicative of myropods so myropods have many pairs of legs and they have two main regions of the body, right? Head and trunk. And they have one pair of antennae, 
right let's move on to mcq number four which processes can only occur through a membrane so what processes can only occur through a membrane active transport can only occur through a membrane it cannot occur without a membrane because active transport requires transport proteins or protein pumps which pump the molecules against the concentration gradient that is from a lower concentration to higher concentration so guys always remember this point that active transport requires protein pumps or the transport proteins which are found in the membrane so active transport can only occur through a membrane diffusion can occur with or without membrane so if there is no membrane diffusion will still occur and diffusion can also occur through the membrane osmosis requires a membrane osmosis cannot occur without a membrane because in osmosis there is only the flow of water molecules and not the solutes so the partially permeable membrane will prevent the passage of solutes and will allow the water to move so always remember this point that active transport and osmosis can only occur through a membrane whereas diffusion can occur with or without the membrane right let's move on to mcq number five a student cuts four cylinders from a potato each cylinder is 30 millimeter long the cylinders are all of the same diameter the potato cylinders are placed in sugar solutions of different concentrations after one hour the lengths of the cylinders are measured again the results are shown in the table which sugar solution has a water potential closest to that of the potato cells so guys in this mcq in this uh, question what are they doing they are carrying out an investigation and in which what are they doing that they are placing the different potato cylinders which are of equal length and diameter they're placing these potato cylinders in different uh sugar solutions of different concentrations so obviously when uh these potato cylinders will be placed in different uh sugar solutions of different concentrations so um the water may go into the potato by osmosis or it may come out of the potato by osmosis so there will be change in the lens of the potato and what we have to uh what we have to figure out in this question which sugar solution has a water potential closest to that of the potato cells so guys uh, we have to choose an option which shows a sugar solution that has a water potential closest to the water potential of the potato cells so guys if you place potato if you place a potato cylinder in a sugar solution which has a water potential very close to the potato cell so what will happen there will be very little change in the length right so where do you see the little change the little change is seen at b because there's a because there's only change of one millimeter in a we see a change of three millimeter the length increases by three in b the length increases by one millimeter right because uh, the change in length is final minus initial so this is the final length and this is the initial length right so always remember that change in length is equals to final length minus initial length this is the final length and this is the initial length so 33 minus 30 is 3 plus 3 so plus 3 is the change over here in b plus 1 is the change 27 minus 30 over here the change is minus 3 millimeters or we can say uh, the length decreases by 3 millimeters and over here the changes minus four millimeters and the length decreases by four millimeters right so the minimum change is in b and that would be expected if you place a potato cylinder in a solution that has a water potential closest to the potato cells let's move on to the next mcq that is mcq number six an area of the grass plants become flooded with seawater seawater contains a higher concentration of salt than the root hair cells of the grass plants what is the effect of the sea water on the function of the root hairs so guys they are saying that a grass plant or uh, an area of the grass plants is flooded with sea water right and they are saying that sea water has a high concentration of salt so guys if there is very high concentration of salt what will happen if there is high concentration of salt in the soil so the water potential of the soil will decrease right and the water will not be able to go into the root hairs 
Do you understand this or no? For example, if this is a root hair and if this is the soil around the root hair, the water potential is now low because salt concentration is high, right? And over here in the root hair, the water potential is higher. So the water cannot go into the root hair. Instead, it will come out of the root hair, right? So the uptake of water by the root hair no longer occurs. What about the uptake of ions by the root hairs? Obviously, the salt concentration has increased and the salt concentration is low in the root hair. So salts can diffuse into the root hair. So salt uptake will still occur. The answer is C. Guys, normally salt concentration is low in the root uh, in the soil. Normally, the soil has low salt concentration and still salts are taken up by active transport. And even if the salt concentration increases, the salts will still be taken up by the root hair by diffusion from a higher concentration to lower concentration. But the movement of water will stop. Let's move on to MCQ number seven. Large biological molecules are made from smaller molecules. Which row shows the correct molecules? Right. So guys, uh, basically, these are the large molecules. And we have to figure out that what these large molecules are made up of, right? Obviously, these are made up of small molecules. So we all know that starch is made up of glucose and proteins are made up of amino acids, right? And lipids are made up of fatty acids and cholesterol and DNA is made up of nucleotides. So the answer is D. Let's move on to MCQ number eight. Enzyme action can be explained by the lock and key hypothesis. Which row is correct for the active site and for the substrate? Okay, so if we talk about the active site, so active site is on the enzyme. Yes, guys, it's on the enzyme. Active site is on the enzyme. Active site is on the substrate. No. Substrate is the lock. No, guys, substrate is the key, right? Substrate is the key. Because substrate fits into the lock, that is the enzyme. Substrate is the key. You all know that enzyme is the lock and substrate is the key. Substrate fits into the enzyme, just like the key fits into the lock. The answer should be B. Let's move on to the next MCQ, MCQ number nine. The diagram shows an experiment to find the rate of photosynthesis in an aquatic plant in different conditions. Which plant produces the most bubbles per minute? Okay, guys, so what is meant by the most bubbles per minute? That is the highest rate of photosynthesis. Highest rate of photosynthesis. Because we all know that the plants, when they're photosynthesizing, they're producing oxygen gas. And the greater the bubbles of oxygen gas, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. So you all know that if light intensity is high, rate of photosynthesis will be high. And if temperature is high, rate of photosynthesis will be high. So over here in option A, B, C and D, wherever the lamp is closest to the aquatic plant, the higher will be the rate of photosynthesis, right? And there will be most bubbles. So in B and in D, you can see the lamp which is close to the plant. So answers cannot be A and C. Moreover, you can see that in D, there is ice added to the water containing aquatic plant. So ice basically reduces the temperature. So over here in D, D will be wrong because rate of photosynthesis will be low due to low temperature. However, there is light and high, however, there is high light intensity, but temperature is lower. So the B is the right option with high light intensity and high temperature, right? Let's move on to next MCQ, that is MCQ number 10. A student grows young plants in four different test tubes. Tube W contains all the mineral ions needed for healthy plant growth. The diagram shows the appearance of the plants after two weeks, which what do tubes X, Y and Z contain? So guys, what they are saying that the student is growing young plants in four different test tubes and 
tube W contains all the mineral ions needed for the healthy plant growth. So W is the control over here, which shows the normal plant growth, normal healthy plant growth. And all the mineral ions are added. The diagram shows the appearance of the plants after two weeks. What do tubes X, Y, and Z contain? So guys, if you look at Z, there is very little growth. And in tube X, there's little growth. And in tube Y, there's poor growth in yellow leaves. So guys, if there is very little growth, you should suspect the deficiency of all the ions, right? Because if there is very, very little growth, then magnesium ions and nitrate ions both are absent. So there should be water only in the tube Z. If there's poor growth and yellow leaves, yellow leaves is the keyword for magnesium deficiency. So Y has all mineral ions except magnesium ions and X has little growth because there is nitrate deficiency, right? All mineral ions except nitrate ions are present in tube X. So the answer is C. Guys, you should know that magnesium ions are required to make chlorophyll and nitrate ions are required for growth. So if nitrate ions are absent, the growth will be little. However, there is a, there is a small role of magnesium ions in growth as well because magnesium ion, ions are required for the formation of chlorophyll and chlorophyll is required for photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, sufficient photosynthesis must occur for the growth to occur. And if magnesium ions and nitrate ions both are absent, there will be very little growth. If uh, nitrate ions are absent, there will be little growth because magnesium ions are present. And if uh, magnesium ions are absent, so what will happen? There will be poor growth, not very poor, not little or very little. It's poor growth. Uh, the growth is affected, but not that much because nitrates are present. However, the leaves will be yellow. And that is the main effect of magnesium deficiency. So whenever you see yellow leaves, there is magnesium deficiency. Whenever you see uh, little growth, there is nitrate deficiency. When you see very little growth, then both the ions are absent. MCQ number 11, which row shows how the rate of transpiration changes when conditions in the atmosphere change? So guys, we have to state that these are the conditions given and what will happen to the rate of transpiration. As you all know that uh, if the wind speed is reduced, transpiration rate will be low. So if you reduce the wind speed, the rate of transpiration will decrease. And if you increase the wind speed, rate of transpiration will increase. And uh, humidity has inverse relationship with the rate of transpiration. So as the humidity increases, if there is increased humidity, there will be decreased rate of transpiration. So the answer is A. Let's move on to MCQ number 12. Which foods can be eaten to prevent scurvy, anemia and rickets? So guys, as you all know that scurvy occurs due to vitamin C deficiency and we have to state the foods that can be used to prevent, right? So vitamin uh, scurvy occurs due to vitamin C deficiency and if you have to prevent scurvy, you have to consume foods which are rich in vitamin C, which are citrus fruits like oranges and lemons. So if you consume oranges and lemons, what will happen? This will prevent scurvy. If you want to prevent anemia, anemia occurs due to iron deficiency. And the food that you need to eat to prevent anemia is red meat because red meat contains iron. Rickets occurs due to calcium and vitamin D deficiency. And if you have to prevent rickets, you have to consume foods which are rich in, uh, in vitamin D and calcium. So the answer is cheese and milk, right? Why? Because uh, the cheese and milk, they contain calcium and vitamin D. So the answer is D, right? MCQ number 13, the diagram shows parts of the human digestive system and associated organs, which part would contain highest concentrations of glucose and amino acids four hours after eating a meal. So guys, um, you all know that whatever food is digested is absorbed in the ileum. This is the ileum and it's absorbed into the blood and this blood flows eventually forming what? Hepatic portal vein. The veins coming out of the ileum eventually forms what these veins form the hepatic portal vein and all the nutrient rich blood is going to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. This is the liver, right? So the hepatic portal vein has the highest concentration of glucose and amino acids. 
फोर आवर्स आफ्टर ईटिंग द मील ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट राइट एंड डी इज दैपेटिक पोर्टल वेन एंड डी इज द आंसर लेट्स मूव ऑन टू एम सी क्यू नंबर फोर्टीन वट इज द अप्रॉक्सीमेट परसेंटेज ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड एक्सपायर्ड एयर रिलीज बाय अ ह्यूमन सो गाइज वेन वी एक्जेल द एयर दैट इज नोन एज द एक्सपायर्ड एयर एक्सपायर्ड एयर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट इट कंटेन्स फोर पॉइंट जीरो परसेंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड राइट एंड सिक्सटीन परसेंट ऑक्सीजन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एक्सपायर्ड एयर इट कंटेन्स सिक्सटीन परसेंट ऑक्सीजन एंड फोर पॉइंट जीरो परसेंट सी ओ टू एंड दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू शुड रिमेंबर फिफ्टीन वॉट आर द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ एरोबिक रेस्पायरेशन इन एनिमल्स एंड प्लांट्स सो गाइज वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट एरोबिक रेस्पायरेशन द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ एरोबिक रेस्पायरेशन आर ऑलवेज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड वाटर इफ यू रिकॉल एरोबिक रेस्पायरेशन दैट इज ग्लूकोज प्लस ऑक्सीजन वट इज फॉर्म्ड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड प्लस वाटर राइट एंड ऑल्सो ए टी पी आर प्रोड्यूस्ड विच आर टेम्प्ररी एनर्जी स्टोरेज मॉलिक्यूल्स सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट दैट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एरोबिक रेस्पायरेशन इट अकर्स इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इट रिक्वायर्स ऑक्सीजन ग्लूकोज रिएक्ट विद ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड वाटर एंड ऑल्सो ए टी पी आंसर इज बी लेट्स मूव ऑन टू एम सी क्यू नंबर सिक्सटीन दिस इज अ वेरी गुड एम सी क्यू द डायग्राम शोज अपेरेटस यूज्ड टू इन्वेस्टिगेट द रेट ऑफ रेस्पायरेशन ऑफ जर्मिनेटिंग पी सीड्स इन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट द कलर्ड ऑयल ड्रॉप मूवड ट्वेंटी फोर मिलीमीटर्स टू द लेफ्ट इन थर्टी मिनट्स कैलकुलेट द रेट ऑफ रेस्पायरेशन ऑफ द पी सीड्स इन मिलीमीटर क्यूब ऑफ ऑक्सीजन पर ग्राम ऑफ पी सीड्स पर मिनट अज्यूम पाए इज इक्वल टू थ्री पॉइंट जीरो so guys uh, before calculating the rate of respiration you need to understand this apparatus so if you look at this apparatus these are the germinating uh, pea seeds and as you all know that the germinating pea seeds they use up oxygen because they are germinating oxygen is required for germination they at this moment they are not carrying out photosynthesis they are just respiring then over here there's a chemical that is used to absorb co2 so when these pea seeds are respiring they are taking up o2 and they are releasing carbon dioxide however this carbon dioxide does not go into the air it's immediately absorbed and absorbed by this chemical right so what happens is that there is loss in the air volume let me explain it again these uh, germinating pea seeds they take up oxygen so there is loss in the air volume however when they release carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide does not become the part of the air because this is absorbed by this chemical which is there to absorb co2 so there is overall loss of air and when the air is lost what happens the air at this portion is lost or we can say the air pressure the air pressure over here decreases which causes the colored oil drop to move to the left and why the colored drop is moving to the left because the air is coming from this capillary tube right so the air that is lost where at this point the air that is lost at this point will be replaced by the air that comes from the capillary tube and if we talk more precisely i can say that the volume of air that is lost at this point will be re replaced by the volume of the air coming from the capillary tube so we have to find this volume of the air that comes from the capillary tube because that is equal to the oxygen taken up by the seeds do you understand this or no because the volume of oxygen taken up by the pea seeds will be equal to the volume lost from this point and this will be equal to the volume of gas coming from the capillary tube right so everything is linked and how do we measure the volume of the air that uh goes from the capillary tube into the test tube we use we use colored oil drop to find out that volume right and how can we do that we know that capillary tube is cylindrical and what is the volume of the cylinder that is pi r square h and over here we are given the diameter of the capillary tube and the distance that the colored 
oil drop will travel will be equal to the height right so as we all know that as the oxygen is absorbed by the germinating pea seeds the colored oil drop will move to the left and it will cover some distance right so we can find out the volume so we have to not just find the volume we have to find the rate of respiration and we have to find that in millimeter cube per grams per minute that means we first need to find the volume in millimeter cube then we need to divide it by 20 grams to find the volume per gram and then we need to divide it by 30 minutes to get the rate in per minutes so what we will do first we will find out the volume volume is pi r square h and pi is 3.0 we need to assume that pi is 3.0 what is the radius radius diameter is 1.0 so radius is 1 divided by 2 the radius is diameter divided by 2 as you all know so radius will be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 square and what is the height height is the distance traveled by the colored oil drop that is 24 millimeters so what will be the answer 3 into 0 0.25 0 0.5 square is 0 0.25 into 24 so what will be the answer 1 um, fourth of 24 or we can say 0 0.25 into 24 will be 6 right and 6 into 3 is 18 so guys the volume will be 18 then we have to divide this by the mass of the pea seeds to find per gram value right so divided by 20 and then you also have to divide it by the time to get the rate per minute so divide by 30 so guys if you divide 18 by 20 and then 20 by